On today's episode of the Subscribe Me.fm show, I take you behind the scenes of my upcoming online course that I'm currently creating called Premium Podcasting. Hello and welcome to episode number 63 of the Subscribe Me show from Subscribe Me.fm where I talk about creating membership sites and online courses, how to make, market, and monetize digital content, the world of WordPress, and tools, techniques, and tips that you can use to create a long-term profitable online business. I'm Ravi Jagopal. I'm the co-founder and co-developer of DigitalAccessPass.com, a membership plugin for WordPress, fondly known as DAP. And I'm currently working on Subscribe Me Academy, and that's the name of my new online hub of courses, coaching, and community. And I'll be launching it in a couple of months from now. And I have so far completed just over 160 hours of work, mostly with the video creation for my first course called Premium Podcasting. So I'm going to take you behind the scenes of this new membership website that I'm creating, as much as I can do on a podcast, of course, and talk about the tools and strategies I've been using so that you can get an idea as to not just how much work this thing is, but also that it is very much doable if you have the know-how and the right tools. So first, it is based on WordPress, of course. I don't use anything else, no other content management system, and I have no plans of using a third-party hosted platform like, for example, patreon.com. Again, nothing against patreon.com. It's just that I don't prefer the hosted, third-party hosted model. So Patreon is actually great for hobbyists looking to monetize their content on the site. Like if you're into drawing cartoons or creating, you know, video games and creating videos about video games and so on. But donations in general is not a great idea when you want to build a long-term profitable online business that will pay for your lifestyle and hopefully make you enough to send your kids to college and maybe even save for retirement as well. Domain name. Now, I have a crazy domain name story for you today. I use and recommend GoDaddy for registering your domain. Now, before you think, oh man, are you seriously going to tell me how to register a domain name? I know, that's not what I'm doing. But hear me out because there's a really, really important lesson here in the story that I'm about to tell you. Now, GoDaddy is not so great as a web host, but they are fantastic for registering domain names. So once upon a time, you know, many years ago, I registered a domain name. I'll tell you what it is in a second, with a company called Namecheap. Now, at the time, there was a big controversy surrounding the GoDaddy CEO saying that he killed elephants in Africa or something crazy like that. I'm not sure. I don't remember what exactly the story was. And a lot of people were leaving GoDaddy in droves at the time. And I, of course, wanted to be socially responsible. So around that time, when I decided to get a domain name, everybody was recommending that people move to Namecheap including a bunch of influencers in the industry at the time. So I went with Namecheap, of course, like an idiot, without doing any research about their service. Everything was great for a couple of years. Then one day, I'm sitting on a hospital bed next to my mother's deathbed. Rest in peace, mom. And I get this Yahoo Messenger notification in the corner of my screen saying I got an email that has the subject, your domain name has been successfully transferred. And this was from Namecheap. Guess what? My Namecheap account had apparently been hacked and the guy who hacked it transferred it to his own name and his email was actually something nonsensical like abc123 at hotmail.com. Basically something ridiculous like that. That is not the exact one, but it was totally meaningless. So you could tell that it was not a real person. So the person did not have a real name, no real physical address, no real email address and Namecheap did not have a phone number on their website. So I frantically emailed them and they then later emailed me back nearly 48 hours later because they were not even in the US. Care to guess which domain this was? Yep, it was the domain digitalaccesspass.com, our main flagship product and someone stole it from us right from under our nose. So I had emailed Namecheap literally like five minutes after the domain transfer had taken place and I showed them that I had not authorized it. I had not even logged into my account and the guy who stole the domain had a nonsensical email and name and address, but they refused 
to acknowledge that this was a hack. They refused to reverse the transfer despite all indications pointing to a hack. So I ended up hiring a copyright law- lawyer, doing all the research and communication from next to my mother's deathbed. And she, you know, like a couple of months later, she passed away. I spent over $5,000 over a period of two years. And I was literally expelling bricks every day for those two years because our main bread and butter domain name was being held hostage. Now, luckily, the person who stole the domain name did not redirect the website to his own hosting for some reason. Otherwise, that would have literally ruined our business because at that point, we were doing over, I think, like like half a million dollars a year in revenue and we already had tens of thousands of DAP users. And I don't know if we could have ever recovered from the catastrophe that it would have been not to mention a public relations disaster. So yeah, it was a very, very close call. And needless to say, I will never use Namecheap ever again. And that's actually one big lesson for you. Make sure the mission critical products and services that you're using in your business, like domain name, web hosting, virtual assistants, WordPress developers, membership platform, make sure they're all from reputable companies and reputable folks, and that at least you have a phone number listed for them on their website. Call them first. See if you can talk to a real person. Leave a voicemail and see if somebody calls you back. Maybe send them an email too. Next, open a support ticket with them as a guest. See how long it takes them to respond. So I would never use any other company other than GoDaddy to register my domain name because I know I can always call them and talk to a real person whenever I have an issue. Next, web hosting, I use Liquid Web. They are the absolute best. And next, after that, I would recommend SiteGround. For membership platform, of course, I'm using digitalaccesspass.com or DAP. And DAP is the only membership platform I know that allows you to create a private RSS feed for your members and give them access to a premium podcast with each member getting their own special podcast RSS feed link, which also has a special key attached to the end of their link that is unique to each member. So that special key allows you, allows DAP to make sure that only authorized members can access your premium podcast in the first place. And if somebody shares their link with unauthorized users, then DAP has a way to track abuse and then automatically lock the account and shut down access to that member's feed and other content, of course, if it detects access to your content, say, from a large number of different IP addresses. Patreon.com is also a fantastic online service that offers a quick and easy way to accept payments and donations if you just want to focus on your craft and not worry about the tech and you're not worried about you know building a long-term business. You just want to make some cash on the side and monetize your hobby so that you can continue what, what you love doing. And if you are a podcaster, they also have a similar unique RSS feed feature just like DAP, but the difference is DAP has security on that feed and Patreon.com does not. So if your Patreon.com patron shares their podcast feed, their unique podcast feed with their friends or posts it in a public forum, there's nothing you can do to protect it. And you won't even know that this kind of abuse is going on to begin with. Next, the key to creating an online course is similar to writing a book. Now, if you remember my super trick that I invented for creating content called the talk technique talk as in T-O-C, as in table of contents. You have to start with a table of contents. Go to subscribeme.fm slash 24 to listen to that episode. And all links, of course, will be in the show notes. Now also check out the last episode I did, which was titled, Start with the Pricing Table. But that was more for brainstorming your overall membership site structure and all the different courses and listing your assets and so on. So go to subscribeme.fm slash 62 to listen to that. And today I'm, of course, talking about specifically one single course. So you've got to start with the table of contents first. Create it in Microsoft Word or other similar tool. Next, once you have an outline, decide what the module content is going to be. Is it going to be text? Is it going to be a PDF or audio or video or a worksheet, a doc or spreadsheet or a zip file and so on? Now, not all of them have to be in video format, but video certainly has the highest perceived value and it gives you the greatest chance to connect with your members. And of course, if it's a lot of content and it doesn't necessarily require looking at a screen, 
then it's going to be hard for your members to sit in front of a screen and consume you know, hours and hours of video. So that's why you've got to turn your video into a podcast, into audio format, so that they can listen to your audio content while they're on a run or walking their dog or doing the dishes. And you can use a free WordPress plugin called PowerPress to create your podcast RSS feed that will be hosted on your own website. And you host the files on a podcast host like Lipson.com, which is where this podcast is hosted. And if you have an account with Lipson, of course, or Lipson or Blueberry or something like that, or you can host it on Amazon S3. And then use DAP to protect your RSS feed so that your members cannot simply pass the link around and only authorized members can access the premium RSS feed in the first place. And I'm in the process of using those exact same tools for creating my own course called Premium Podcasting. So I've also been converting the video files into audio. I'll talk about what tool I use in just a second. So whether you're you doing audio or video, you've got to start with the script first. Even if it's going to be a screencast video, I know it's probably easier to just fire up Camtasia Studio or other screen recording software and straight away start recording your screen and wing the whole thing. As you go from screen to screen, you capture every mouse move and aimless wandering of your mouse and all the different clicks. And as you type in long descriptions and text in real time, the time it takes for your site to save a page and move from page to page, all the errors and delays that may come up as you're trying to demo something. Now it's easy to do all that and just let it all rip, which would of course be the most convenient way for you to do it. Or you can put in a little bit more thought and time into it ahead of time and you can actually do a screencast video of you doing something using just screenshots. That way you can plan ahead of what the screens are that you wanna show. You can pre-fill all the fields, no real-time typing or clicking or saving. You go from screenshot to screenshot, explain the different sections of the screenshot, and that is going to result in a much cleaner, more efficient video that's also easy to follow along. Obviously, some video you're just going to have to show them in real time, but you might be surprised as to how many presentations you can get away using solid screenshots. And then later on in the video, when you're editing it in Camtasia or our equivalent editing software, you can use callouts like highlight boxes and you can dim the screen, only highlight certain parts of the screen. You can have arrows pointing to the section of the screen that you're talking about and so on. You can blur things that you don't want people to see like passwords or, or some special keys. So you can always do all that editing later, but you can start with a screenshot and still come out with a really good video. So that's what I have done for the first 10 videos that have already completed and edited and optimized and everything is ready, it uploaded to the website. And I was able to achieve most of the things that I've done so far with just screenshots. And they've come out really, really great. Tightly edited, well-produced, no wasting the viewer's time. And of course, my favorite video editor is Camtasia Studio. I use that for every single video. And actually, I've even been using that to record and edit this very podcast for the last, little over the last two years. So I export videos as an MP4 file and audio as an MP3 file. Now, when I initially export the audio file, I export it as a WAV file, W-A-V, because that is uh, that has no compression. Then there's a fantastic audio optimization website called Auphonic.com. It's an online service. You get two hours of free audio processing a month. So basically what it does is if you upload uh, audio, preferably a WAV file, which is an uncompressed file, then it'll level out the audio. If you have multiple guests, it'll make sure all of them are sounding the same as you. You know, it doesn't suddenly go high for one person and low for another person. Music and background stuff and other clips that you may have introduced, it levels the audio, it cleans up some of the audio. I don't know the full magic that it does, but if you upload a WAV file or a video file and you get back, what you get back has much better audio quality than what you uploaded. And uh, like I said, it's two hours free audio processing every month. And if you need more, it's really cheap to buy more time. So if I uploaded a half hour video and a half hour audio, and then I upload them and let Auphonic run its magic on the file, it'll give me back whatever format I want. So I can say, give me back MP4. If I upload an MP4 video, I can say, give me back 
an optimized MP4 with great audio, and I also want an optimized MP3. So you can upload a video and get back a video and an audio only version of that same thing. And so because the video was half hour and the audio was half hour separately, right? Yeah, I uploaded two files, let's say, then that means I used one hour of uh, free processing and I would have one more hour left for the month. I, I obviously can buy more time if I need to. Anyway, so whether it's audio or video, I never ever publish it without running it through alphonic.com first. So now I have created the course content, which is video or audio or text. Next, I use a course creation plugin called Thrive Apprentice. Apprentice makes it super easy to create a structure for your online course content. So you basically create a topic and then within the topic, you create a course. And then under this course, you create multiple lessons. You can drag and rearrange the order of these lessons. You can format the course content using the uh, built-in Thrive Architect drag and drop editor. So you get a ready-made page for your online course, which shows all the lessons and it keeps track of which ones somebody has completed, which ones they haven't started yet. And you also get a nice sidebar with all those lessons in, in the course. And you can also get a main page that shows a list of all courses available. So once you've created that, then of course you have to protect the, the content because Thrive Apprentice or Architect, they're not you know membership plugins. You need, still need a membership plugin. That's where Adapt comes in and you, you can create a separate product, multiple levels, and you can say, okay, this, this course, this course, and this course is part of my gold. Only two courses are part of my you know, silver and one course is part of my bronze. So you can pick and choose and protect different courses under different products in DAP. So Thrive Architect basically allows you to structure what you would have normally had to do manually in WordPress and it automates all of that for you. So that's what I would recommend for you as well. Thrive Apprentice. Check it out by going to subscribeme.fm slash thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E. That is an affiliate link, by the way. And I'm hosting all of my member video and audio on Amazon S3. And I'm also storing some of the audio on within my Lipsyn account at lipsyn.com. It's a service that hosts my podcast, this very podcast, Subscribe Me. So use the coupon code subscribe me, all one word, all lowercase, and get up to almost two months for free. The month you join, as well as the next full month will be free if you use the code subscribe me. The RSS feed is created by PowerPress which is the best RSS feed creation plugin for WordPress, and it's free. And of course, all the content, including the premium podcast, is protected by digitalaccesspass.com or DAP. And currently, I'm using the DAP shopping cart that comes along with DAP and accepting payments via PayPal and authorize.net. Of course, you could also use Stripe and a bunch of other payment processors that DAP integrates with. And Veena Prashant, my beautiful wife and co-founder of DAP, has actually just launched a fantastic new shopping cart platform called SmartPay Cart, fondly known as SPC. SPC is easily the most powerful shopping cart platform for WordPress, and it has a drag and drop checkout page builder, it has order bumps, it has one click upsells with Stripe, Authorize.net, and PayPal. Yes, you heard that right, one click upsells with PayPal. And it has members area upsells with Stripe, where even months after your member has already purchased something from you, they can still make additional purchases with just one click and not have to fill out the entire credit card and billing information all over again. And SPC has a visual funnel builder. It has pre-applied coupons. It has full tracking and reporting, shopping cart abandonment tracking, and so much more. And I'm so, so proud of Veena. She's not only incredibly smart and beautiful, but I don't think there's a single person on earth who is more passionate about what they do. And uh, sh she has so much knowledge. She's amazingly fast, super smart, extremely intelligent. And she has been working endlessly for over a year now, or close to a year, thousands of hours put in with her team developing and tweaking and testing, incorporating the best of breed features into the shopping cart to make sure it is the absolute best shopping cart you can use for your WordPress site. So I couldn't be more proud of her and I just can't wait to use her Smart Pay Cart plugin on my own sites. So don't forget to check it out at smartpaycart.com. And I'm going to be switching my site to SPC in about a month's time when I'm ready to create the checkout page. Then I use coolcastplayer.com to embed the premium podcast in the members area so that if somebody wanted to listen to the episodes right there on a web page, they can do that too. And it works with both uh, desktop and mobile. 
or they can also copy the premium RSS feed that has already been generated by DAP and PowerPress and add it to their favorite podcast app, like Apple Podcast app or Overcast, which is my favorite podcast app, or Podcast Addict for Android. And they can subscribe to the feed and listen to it offline. And anytime you publish a new episode into your premium RSS feed, their app will download it because they are already subscribed to it using the special, unique RSS feed that that DAP creates for them. And their podcast app will keep pinging your RSS feed, and whenever there's a new episode, it'll automatically download it. Next, I use an iOS app called Timer Plus, which allows me to track how much time I'm spending while working on this course. And so far, I'm up to a little bit over 160 hours at the time of recording this episode. And remember, this is 160 hardcore, concentrated hours of actual work, working on the course. So I turn it on just before, say, I start working on my screenshots, right, for my course, for one of the modules. Then if I stop to go get a drink of water or go to the bathroom, I stop the timer. If I go on Facebook or check email, I stop the timer. I only turn it on when I'm doing actual work on the course, whether it's writing the script or taking screenshots or recording screencast video or editing the video and so on. And the timer stops as soon as I switch to a different task. So it's 160 hours of super concentrated, laser-focused work. And I think I'll probably end up around 200 or 220 hours uh, by the time I'm done. So think about that for a second, right? I charge $300 an hour for one-on-one consulting. So let's say you even shave off one-third of it, okay? And take a very conservative $200 an hour for my peak time at my best, extracting the best of my knowledge and experience. It's probably worth like $1,000, but let's go with $200 just to give an idea. So even at $200 an hour, 200 hours of that is like $40,000 worth of content right there. So this is not some exaggerated inflated value to, you know, just to make it look like a bargain. No, that's not what it is. This is the real deal. Real tens of thousands of dollars worth of material. And it is going to be a total steal when this course comes out. Obviously, I'm not going to just sell just the course. The course will also be a part of a membership site. There will be multiple tiers. Now, I'm not ready to start promoting the course just yet, but if you're curious to know how to get the best possible early bird, like early dis- access discount on this course, just send me an email to Ravi, R-A-V as in Victor, I, so Ravi at subscribeme.fm, or just go to subscribeme.fm and email me using the contact form there. And then, of course, I forgot to mention, I also use a video tool, uh, a presentation tool called Powtoon which allows me to create great looking slides and it has little animations like people dancing and people, you know, things coming in and out, moving out, the hand bringing things in and a bunch of little animated characters and uh, assets as well. So that's it. That's pretty much my entire toolbox right there. Now I'm sure I'll think of something else later and I'll update you on the next episode in a couple of weeks. Or you could just go to subscribeme.fm slash group and join my free Facebook group. And then you can see all of the updates I'm posting there from behind the scenes of this new online course that's going to be launched in a couple of weeks here, maybe a month, called Premium Podcasting. So until the next time, thank you so much for listening. I really, really appreciate you letting me into your personal space and for listening to my show. Cheers and talk soon.